Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Breaking overnight explosions heard in the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. I'm ABC's Jay O'Brien. That plus the Kremlin's response to that massive bridge explosion over the weekend coming up. 67 degrees at 430 this morning. We had some beautiful weather over the weekend. Will that fall like trend to continue through the week. Michael, let us know in just a bit. And a good morning to you. It is Monday, October 10th. Sarah in for Steph. Good to have you here this morning. Always a pleasure to be with you guys. Mike Ostrace joined us now. Mike, remember a week ago you were like, guys, it's a little bit more humid and we were like, huh? huh? But this morning <laughs> we can definitely tell it is considerably more humid out there. Yeah, ever since you know we dried out last week uh, each and every day, a couple of degrees, a couple of degrees, and this morning it's like, okay, yeah, it, it's humid. If you were outside long enough, over the weekend, you noticed it. But still, like you said, pretty weekend. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was real nice. Good weekend for fishing, too, right? We'll hear more about that as well. Anyway, we are starting off with a lot of clear skies as of right now. Temperature stands at 68 at the airport. No 50s on the map right now. As a matter of fact, go the other direction. 71 right now at Canyon Lake. 68 at the airport. 67 in Helotus. And then these numbers, which were down in the 30s and 40s. Just about a week ago, now everybody, with a couple of exceptions, above 60. So it's not like it slaps you in the face, but you step outside, and when you get uh, dew points above 60, you definitely uh, notice the humidity, and you will notice it this morning. We do have a lot of ragweed out there. Mold is on the low side, and we're going to keep a lot of clear skies around this morning. Temperatures will drop maybe another couple of notches here and there, mostly clear skies. And then later on today, a bit of a breeze, 87 for high temperature, partly cloudy skies. Little disturbance is going to be moving from basically south to north through the hill country. A couple of showers are going to be possible off to the west and even a sprinkle or two here in town with partly cloudy skies. Now it is going to get warmer uh, tomorrow about the same and then we kind of peak on Wednesday preceding a cold front. Don't get really excited about this one. Yes, we will have a cooler morning low temperature, but um, no sweater weather in the afternoon just yet. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Mike, thank you. Funeral services are later today for longtime Bear County Judge Karen Crouch. Last week, Crouch died from injuries she sustained in a car crash that happened back in 2011. Her sister-in-law died in the head-on collision caused by a teen driver in Vermont. Crouch suffered life-threatening internal injuries and underwent several surgeries. She was on the bench for over two decades before retiring in 2018 to focus on her family and her health. Funeral services will be held at San Antonio Presbyterian on San Pedro Avenue. A viewing will be held from 4 to 7 p.m. this evening, and a worship service begins at 7. Judge Crouch was 62 years old. A former Bear County constable convicted of tampering with evidence is having to wait a little longer to learn her fate. Michelle Barrientes Vela is due back in court on October 24th. Attorneys in the prosecution in the case are preparing to make their case on whether a former employee should be allowed to testify. Mark D. Garcia served as a captain under Barrientes Vela. Last week, he agreed to testify against her in exchange for having his own charges dropped. Judge Vela Meza has now given attorneys and prosecutors two weeks to prepare. This morning, a strategic city in Ukraine is still reeling after a stunning Russian missile strike that killed more than a dozen civilians. As ABC's Jay O'Brien reports, it came after Russian President Vladimir Putin accused Ukrainian forces of blowing up a critical bridge connecting Russia to the occupied territory of Crimea. Overnight, large explosions heard in the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky confirming the explosions are from Russian missile attacks in multiple cities, saying Russia is trying to, quote, wipe us off the face of the earth. It comes as the Ukrainian city of Zaporizhia is still reeling from a Russian missile strike Sunday that killed at least 17 civilians. Rescuers pulling survivors out of the rubble. Ukraine's president calling the attack absolute evil. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin is now labeling the massive explosion Saturday at a crucial Russian bridge a terrorist attack. Before and after satellite images showing the damage to this vital supply line for Moscow's military. Connecting Russia to the Crimean Peninsula, which Putin illegally annexed in 2014. Ukraine has not directly claimed responsibility. 
as Ukrainian forces continue making tactical gains in occupied regions in the country's south and east. President Biden's stirring warning, saying Putin is not joking when making nuclear threats, now hangs over the conflict. Biden adding, we have not faced the prospect of Armageddon since Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis. The White House saying there is no new intelligence that Putin is planning an imminent use of nuclear weapons and defending the president's comments. What the president was reflecting was that the stakes are high right now, given what's going on on the battlefield in Ukraine and given the very irresponsible and reckless comments made by Vladimir Putin in just the last uh, few days. Putin has also appointed a new general, Sergei Surovikin, to oversee military operations in Ukraine. He's best known for what's been described as total ruthlessness during bombing campaigns in Syria. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. In other news, North Korea says its recent barrage of missile launches were tests of its tactical nuclear weapons to, quote, hit and wipe out potential South Korean and U.S. targets, end quote. Its leader Kim Jong-un has signaled he would conduct more provocative tests. Today's North Korean statement is seen as an attempt to popularize Kim as he is struggling to overcome difficulties such as pandemic-related economic hardships. State media says North Korea's recent missile tests were in response to recent naval drills between U.S. and South Korean forces. Those drills involved the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier the USS Ronald Reagan. In Venezuela, at least 25 people are dead and more than 50 people are missing after a landslide on Monday. It happened following several days of heavy rain. The landslide was caused by an overflow of five streams in the north central part of the country. More than a thousand officials from the country's national risk management system and police officers are participating in search and rescue plan. The country's president declared three days of national mourning in support of those families whose loved ones were lost. There are no reports of deaths or damage after a volcano erupted this past weekend on the Italian, Italian island rather, of Stromboli. The eruption uh, triggered smoke and lava that was caught on camera right here. The eruptive phase on Stromboli caused by the partial, partial collapse of the crater Terrace. The lava flow produced a three-minute seismic signal. The Stromboli volcano is one of the most active volcanoes on the planet. It has been erupting almost continuously since way back in 1932. Right now, 437, 67 degrees. Go Spurs go. The San Antonio Spurs still trying to get their first win in the preseason. Find out what the players have to say about last night's game against New Orleans. Checking traffic right now. See how things are looking out there on your early Monday morning commute for you early bird commuters, as we like, lovingly like to call you. 281 at San Pedro. No problems to report. We will see Stephen Cavazos coming up at the top of the hour. Mike hinted at a quote unquote cool front. <laughs> what does that really mean? And will we have some rain later in the week? When can we take it out of quotes? Yes, that would be nice. You'll let us know when we come back. Welcome back. Your San Antonio Spurs in action at the AT&C Center last night looking for the first win of the preseason against the Pelicans. First quarter, Jeremy Sohan running the break. Dishes to Zach Collins for a two-handed punch. Spurs down four after one. Doug McDermott off the screen pulls up the three to keep it close. Spurs open the third on an 8-2 run. Trey Jones gets the floater to fall and tie the game at 54, but the Pelicans respond with a 20-3 run. Devontae Graham's three puts New Orleans up by 17. In the end, Pelicans win at 111-97. San Antonio is now 0-3 in the preseason. It's been great. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to go through some difficult times. Uh, I'm young. Uh, our whole team is young, so we're going to compete. I know when I was a rookie and I had guys in my ear telling me to shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Whenever you open, it gave me a lot of confidence and I, I felt like I had a good year. So um, hopefully I can be the same guy for, for them. Up next, Spurs take on the Utah Jazz tomorrow at the Vivint Arena starting at 8 p.m. On Thursday, our team is back at the AT&T Center to host the Oklahoma City Thunder. Mike McCarthy established the motto of the season for the Cowboys who was this week when he was told they were five and a half point underdogs heading into yesterday's game against the Rams. McCarthy responded, we're nobody's underdogs. And the players responded. Third play of the game, Durant Armstrong with a strip sack on the Rams quarterback Matthew Stafford. Demarcus Lawrence scoops it up, rumbles his way for a 19 yard score. There was confusion on the extra point. New deep snapper Matt Overton hikes it too soon. Cowboys and Rams exchange field goals to make it 9-3 Dallas after one. 
Rams jump on top Stafford to Cooper Cup coming across the middle and just outruns the Cowboys secondary on his way to the house 75 yards. But the Cowboys respond on their own. Tony Pollard. This is with a I think play of the day breaks right up the middle breaks tackle left and right and then cuts the to 57 yard touchdown 16 10 Cowboys at the half Dallas adds a field goal in the third or some field goals to make it to the fourth with a 12 point lead last chance Rams Micah Parsons comes around the edge for the sack knocking the ball loose Sam Williams falls on it for Dallas and that is the ball game folks Cowboys win 22 to 10 and don't look now but Dallas is now four and one on the season Texans were the only winless team in the NFL before him playing Jacksonville yesterday game tied at six under five to play Texans turn running back Damian Pierce on second and five from the Jacksonville 22 Pierce with a rushing run plowing over and through defenders picking up 20 yards setting up a first and goal from the Jags to Texans turn to Pierce again and he caps off the drive with this two yard score to pick the, put the Texans on top 13 six Jacksonville did have one last chance a Hail Mary from their 46 but the pass is picked off by Desmond King to get the Texans into the win column. Finally Texans win at 13 six Houston now one three and one on the season. San Antonio FC continues to make history this season. Yesterday, the Alamo City Club defeated Birmingham Legion on the road. 2-1 Ignacio Bellon scored the equalizer in the 41st minute. And Santiago Patino tallied the game winner in the 84th minute. This is the club's 13th road victory this season. They're now tied for the most in USL championship history. They have one more regular season game. That's versus Orange County SC. That game is Saturday, 730 at Toyota Field out on San Antonio's northeast side. And that's a look at morning sports. Thank you, Mark. All right, it's 444 and 67 degrees. Ready to start shopping for the holidays. Up next, why retailers are likely to respond with more aggressive discounts earlier than expected. People are getting an early jump on the holiday shopping season, a very early jump. That's because the discounts are already here. ABC's Becky Worley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the holiday shopping season has begun. This morning, data will be released that predicts a more subdued holiday shopping season for retailers and bigger discounts for shoppers. So our expectation is, well, the shopping season may start earlier with discounting. Retailers are likely to respond with more aggressive discounts, and we've seen that in our data so far this year as we lead into the holiday season. Like Amazon launching its new fall shopping event tomorrow, promoting deals on Amazon branded electronics and products from the likes of Hasbro, KitchenAid, and Samsung. Target just this morning announcing its week-long Black Friday deals. Start your season of savings with Target Deal Days. And if you're worried about buyer's remorse, buying too soon and seeing a big price drop closer to Black Friday, we've got one tip that can save you a bundle if that happens. That's all coming up at 7 a.m. Plus, the start of these deals going live this morning. We'll have the details. I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, New York. 448 checking traffic one more time. See if there are any incidents out there right now. It's so early. We usually don't have too many problems this time of day. There's 281 at Bassey, 90 at Nogalito is getting a little bit more active as we keep an eye on things for you again at 448 on your Monday morning. And the moon was beautiful. Oh, it was gorgeous this weekend. It was beautiful this weekend, and that's what we have Mike showing it, us. It went full, right, Mike? This is yeah, the Hunter's yeah. moon? Yesterday was uh, was full moon, technically. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you get a chance to see it uh, later on this evening, and uh, it's going to be gorgeous out there. It is the Hunter's moon. There were a couple of questions as to whether this was the harvest moon. No, the harvest moon is the one that is closest to the autumnal equinox. And the way things worked out this year, that was last month's full moon. That was technically technically the the harvest moon but boy oh boy that's a gorgeous picture moon dazzling hunter's moon for all you folks buying your meat at heb 
OK, I like that one. We have a lot of clear skies this morning. Despite the clear skies, we've got uh, mild temperatures and a lot of humidity, mostly mid and upper 60s around the area. 60 Rio Medina Comfort, 71 Canyon Lake right now. And these numbers do points measure simply put measure moisture in the atmosphere. This is how you figure out relative humidity. Most everybody's above 60. And so therefore, that means you're noticing the humidity when you step outside. And each and every day last week, we started off really, really dry. Added a couple of degrees, added a couple, added a couple, and then we got into the weekend as well as today. As a matter of fact, today compared to yesterday, six degrees higher for the dew point temperature than yesterday morning, 10 higher in Hondo. Yesterday was a really pleasant morning. Sit outside drinking coffee in the morning, and this morning, a little bit different story. So we'll have a lot of clear skies, a couple of clouds around here this morning. Bottom out at 65, and then work our way up through the 70s by late morning. Plenty of sunshine in the morning hours. Then call it partly cloudy skies. Now, I've got this 20% chance on here, 87 for a high temperature, by the way. That's to pretty much take into account what's happening off to the west. Notice how there are a couple of showers in the past 12 hours on the satellite radar loop and there is a disturbance out here to the west obviously which is sliding from kind of southwest to northeast some of this energy is going to be working its way through portions of the hill country later on today which this model i think does a really good job depicting more clouds out there and just a couple of these uh, little scattered showers there could be a sprinkle here in town most of it, if anything, is going to be out there to the west. It's going to be about a 20% chance for any of those uh, showers out there. Now, as we head in toward the middle part of the week, temperatures about the same tomorrow, and then they kind of peak there on Wednesday. Then we have a front moving on through here, but again, don't get really excited about the word front. 83 at noon, mostly sunny skies, partly cloudy later on today. 87, couple of showers off to the west. A sprinkle here in town is possible. Not very likely though, and then tomorrow we're going to start off very mild 67 degrees 87 for a high temperature 92 on Wednesday. It's going to be hot and fairly humid front comes through overnight in the wee hours of Thursday and as it comes through it may actually squeeze out a couple of showers very small chance for that then we're going to be clearing on out 80s but it's not like there's a blast of cold air in behind it we will have drier air so that's going to allow temperatures Friday morning to be down to 58 but then we're going to make it back up into the mid 80s so close or a little bit above normal readings with the exception of Friday morning so not any you know, sweater weather, then with a lot of clouds over the weekend and a chance of rain right now. It looks like late Sunday, Monday of next week. So when this turns out to be the real front, can you bold face the, the cold front itself? Can you can you italicize and bold face? So it's, it's actually going to be a physical front that I will oh, have. Okay. <laughs> it's it's the real either. thing. Yeah. <laughs> go old school. Have it be a giant magnet. <laughs> there you yeah. go. When I carve that baby out of wood, I think. They're so. probably up in a closet up in upstairs right there. I wouldn't doubt it. I know. I would love to see that. Uh, um, I would just love to see a front. <laughs> Same. Same. Yeah. All right. uh, this Thank way. you, Mike. I mean, a little, like I said, it ain't going to be the big one. So. Thank you, Mike. 452, 66 degrees. Well, Kanye West runs into trouble on Twitter, plus which movie won the weekend box office? First up, a lot of numbers this morning. Pick 3, 822, Fireball 6. Daily 4 numbers, 2558, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 378, 20, 28. Texas Lotto, 2329. 35, 38, 40, 49, and Powerball, 13, 43, 53, 60, 68, Powerball 5, Power Play 2. A horror flick is the winner of the box office, plus Kanye West is suspended on Twitter. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. You're going to die. Good news for last week's box office number one, the horror flick Smiles. Days on top for week two, earning another $17.6 million. We have to show people that they don't have to be afraid. The family film Lyle Lyle Crocodile bowed in second with $11.5 million. Two soldiers and the nurse found ourselves in... Amsterdam. But it's a big disappointment for the weekend's other new release. Filmmaker David O. Russell's star-studded comedy Amsterdam opened with only 6.5 million bucks, about 8% of the reported 80 million it cost to make. 
All right, so you bring it up, Kanye. The same day that Saturday Night Live used its cold open to skewer Kanye West's behavior the previous week. And says he's never read a book in his life. Twitter removed one of his tweets in which he said he would, quote, go death con three on Jewish people. Instagram also restricted his account for alleged rules violations, though they didn't provide specifics. And happy birthday to the West Wing star Bradley Whitford. He turned 63 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. It is now 457, 66 degrees. Well, crucial midterm elections are less than a month away. We'll show you a new report that suggests that Republicans have a 70% chance of winning a majority in the House. And friends of a missing man in Live Oak, you're here in the San Antonio area, discover a body in an underground drainage tunnel. Why neighbors are upset with the police investigation so far. Taking a look outside with the roads with trans guides. So far this morning, we haven't seen any incidents pop up. Stephen Cavasso has just walked into our studio. He will have an update on the roads. We come back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. How was good about that? Listening to the families, listening to the community, and responding. But at the end of the day, this is about making sure our kids are safe. Lawmakers and Robb Elementary shooting victims' families reflect on the retirement announcement of Uvalde CISD's superintendent. Why some say they're upset about his decision to step aside. And control of Congress is at stake in this year's midterm elections. Why all eyes seem to be on a Senate race in Georgia. Outside with live cam, a little bit more humidity. It is noticeable this morning. We're only down to about 66 degrees. But Mike says another front is on the way and we should see another drop in morning temperatures later this week. That's good news. Morning, everybody. It is October 10th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Happy to be with you guys this morning as Steph takes a day off. Let's get this Monday rolling with a forecast from Mike. Good morning, everybody. Well, you step outside and uh, you'll notice the humidity this morning. It was there over the weekend. Not bad, but yeah, it's really there. 66 degrees right now. That bottom number there, 61 dew point when it gets above 60. Yep, you kind of go, oh, it's sort of humid out there. 87 for a high temperature today, so we will be a few degrees above normal. We're starting off above, above normal right now. The aquifer yesterday went up seven tenths of a foot. We always get that little bump over the weekends. Ragweed's really, really high. I don't know if you're uh, sneezing, sniffling from that. Mold is on the low side. So here's what it looks like as far as the uh, dew point temperatures. Everybody is right around that threshold number of 60, uh, 61 Castor, or excuse me, Port ISA, Randolph Stinson out there at the airport, 62 in New Braunfels. Not like it, you know, that kind of summer humidity that slaps you in the face or pushes back when you walk outside. But again, just enough to notice it. Otherwise, mostly clear skies. Couple of showers out to the west. There's a little disturbance. Uh, bigger well out to, over toward New Mexico, but the, that's going to throw some disturbances in our western counties and may actually see a sprinkle here in town later on this afternoon. Now tomorrow, so going to be warm upper 80s and then it's going to get even hotter, should say on Wednesday up into the low 90s. Then a cold front moves through here. Don't pull out the uh, sweater and grab the hot chocolate just yet. Now you may need it by Friday morning, but it's not as though we're getting a big blast of cold air. Just a little quick, uh, some dry air definitely coming in here. So that's going to cool us down. But then as we go into the weekend, it's going to be mid 80s, mid 60s at slightly above normal. A couple of showers and uh, right now looks like a decent rain chance late Sunday going into this time next week. All details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Good morning, Stephen. Anything going on yet early? No, actually, it's been pretty quiet over here, Mike. As we get a look around town for that early morning commute, uh, let's take a look and see what's happening here on TransGuide. Uh, 410 at Perrin Vital. Uh, Mark mentioned this a little bit earlier. It's pretty early, so it's rare when something major happens on the road that's going to really slow people down right now. Short weekend, but hey, it's going to be a short commute this morning as well. There's 281 at Hildebrand. Just make sure to watch out for that curve over there, but let's get you to the map. Uh, nothing to report there, nothing really to see except for those active road closures, which I'll mention a little bit later on in the newscast, but right now I'd say uh, enjoy the drive to wherever your destination is going to take you. If it's right here in the Alamo City, not too bad either. 24 minutes, that journey from Bernie on I-10 eastbound. If you're traveling in this early, 28 minutes, a little bit of a slowdown uh, coming in from Bolverde on 281 South, uh, but that's because we also see a lot of road work that is taking place, and I'll get to that a little bit later on. 
flood and a 25 minute drive time on I-35 southbound if you're traveling in from New Braunfels. So things don't look too bad there, but we take it back to Transguide. Quiet roads are how we're starting this work week, but will it last? We'll have to keep a close eye on things, but always, always make sure you do the same. Mark Sarah. Thank you, sir. Natalie, breaking news. San Antonio police working to track down the person who took aim at a woman behind the wheel. They found her inside her crashed car with a bullet wound in her head. Our Katrina Weber live northeast of downtown on Fredericksburg Road near Gardena Street. Katrina, what is her status now? Well, good morning. Uh, police tell us that woman's in the hospital right now in critical condition, and she does have a bullet wound in the back of her head. They say she was hit by a bullet that came through her window, went through the headrest, and then hit her in the head. Her car still right here where it crashed after she was shot around 345 this morning. Police are going through it for any uh, evidence, ev any clues that they can find. Now, they say that before all of this happened, they had a phone call, they believe, from that woman telling them that she was either being chased or followed by someone else. Now, police uh, then got the call about the crash and found the woman in the car. They say when they found her car, there was still a call that was connected. They were able to talk to the person at the other end of the call. And that man who they were talking to on the phone says that he was speaking with the woman. He heard some commotion. He believes she had another person in the car with her. And that person was telling her to go, go, as if someone was chasing them. Now, he says that he heard a gunshot and then everything went silent and again police got the call about the crash came here found the woman in the car rushed her to the hospital but they say that if she did have a passenger in the car with her that person was long gone and again they don't know who shot her they are currently uh, going around to some of these businesses in the area to try to see if they have surveillance video uh, that might give them some more clues about who that person was who shot her they say they believe it happened uh, right around the area past that motel near a bus stop so they're going to focus on that area in terms of trying to get surveillance video but again that woman in the hospital right now in critical condition Reporting live northwest of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Tonight, the Valley CISD School Board is meeting for the first time after fallout from hiring a former DPS trooper who responded to the Robb Elementary School shooting May 24th. Since then, the entire district police department has been suspended, and the superintendent announced his retirement in an email sent Friday. Uvalde CISD superintendent Dr. Hal Harrell wrote about his 31 years in education. He told staff he wanted them to be the first to know, quote, there will be an item in closed session to consider and discuss superintendent retirement options and transition, end quote. The board can choose to take action afterwards. Families of the victims have made it clear they didn't ask for this. All they asked for was Harold to suspend the district officers who were there that day. As far as, you know, how Harold, I know the community is really upset. A lot of people love him, myself included. But it's about leadership right now, and it's about supporting us families. I wish more people in the community understood that. We fight for all the children and the two teachers that lost their lives that day. How should it be fighting for them too? These were his employees. These were students in his district. UCISD's board meeting will happen in the Benson boardroom tonight at 6 p.m. We have been made aware of a rally in support of Dr. Harrell at 5.30 outside of the boardroom. We'll be at both events bringing you live updates on air online on ksat.com. Well, a group of friends searching for a man who disappeared a month ago claimed they found his body yesterday near Judson Road and I-35. Family and friends believed they found 52-year-old Keith Hammond because they say they recognized his boots. The Live Oak Police Department considered him a person of interest in connection to a death of a woman found three weeks ago in the same area. However, the medical examiner's office has not confirmed yet that the body is Hammond's. The family is upset with the police department for not finding the body sooner, and they say the police dropped the ball in this investigation. You didn't do your job yep. that we pay you to do. I can tell you we have been out here at least two or three more times checking the area. Uh, obviously, we did not find the person. Live Oak Assistant Police Chief Matt Malone says their work isn't done and they're still looking into the cause of the death. With today being a holiday, you're getting an extra day to register to vote. The official deadline is tomorrow. Any U.S. citizens 18 years old or older by Election Day, November 8th, can register. You can register by mail or in person at the Bear County Elections Office or at a variety of other locations. 
We have that list available. Scan the QR code on your screen. It's also online at KSAT.com. Some key races this year include Bear County Judge and, of course, the gubernatorial race. And the crucial midterm elections are less than a month away with control of Congress at stake. And as ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, one of the most controversial candidates is getting a new show of support from the leaders of his party. This morning, more Republicans are pledging support for Herschel Walker, the Senate candidate in Georgia facing fallout over reports that he once paid for a woman's abortion. I think people make mistakes. Congressman Don Bacon standing by Walker. I've made my own mistakes in life, and Herschel has too. We all have. I think it's better just to be honest. Walker, a staunch anti-abortion candidate, denies allegations published in the Daily Beast that he paid for a woman's abortion in 2009. And the New York Times reports Walker urged the same woman to have a second abortion two years later, but she refused, giving birth to his child. ABC News has not independently confirmed the reports. I said this, this here, the abortion thing is false. It's a lie. The stakes are high in next month's midterm elections with control of the House and Senate hanging in the balance. Some people are trying to have us go back to 1922, and that's, that's not the correct way. And emotions running high with abortion rights and inflation among the key issues. Election offices across the country are now boosting security. In Flagstaff, Arizona, one election office will be barricaded by bulletproof glass, and the walls of an election office in Tallahassee, Florida, are being fortified with Kevlar. The website 538 now gives Republicans a 70% chance of winning a majority in the House, but only a 33% chance of winning back to Senate. Republican leaders are focusing on states where Senate races are a toss-up. The Republican Senatorial Committee Chair, Senator Rick Scott, will campaign with Herschel Walker tomorrow in Georgia, where Senator Raphael Warnock holds a slight lead in the polls. In Pennsylvania, Republicans are dumping millions of dollars into the Senate race. A new poll shows Republican Mehmet Oz closing the gap on John Fetterman, 46 to 40. Back in June, Fetterman held a nine-point lead in the same poll. Nevada is another Senate race to watch. Polls show the Trump-backed candidate with a two-point edge over the Democrat. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. All right, 511 and 66 degrees. Twitter doesn't want you taking any more screenshots. What it is changing to discourage you from doing so. Up next, a local event aimed at lifting up and inspiring young Girl Scouts. Why this year's Day of the Girl took on new meaning. Outside with live cam, mild 66 degrees, not bad. Or many of us prefer temperatures in the 50s this time of year, and they will happen later this week. Mike will tell you when exactly coming up. Welcome back. 515 girls had their time to shine at the Day of the Girl event at Yanaguad and Garden this weekend. The Girl Scouts of Southwest Texas organized the event, which aims to inspire and support them with whatever goals they have. There are different activities related to STEM, live music, games, and some local judges even let the girls try on the robes. So the organizers say it's all about giving them a positive influence at an early age. We know that women start out as girls, so we know that there's a lot of work that we need to do to support all the girls across our city so that they're growing up in a better place for them and they're able to succeed. The event also honored Amory Jo Garza, who was a Girl Scout. She was one of the 21 people killed in the Robb Elementary shooting. 515, 66 degrees. Well, the new iPhone is sometimes calling 911 while users are on roller coasters. Wow. What? That's not good. How you can prevent that from happening? And he wants you to buy his electric car, watch his SpaceX rockets, and now Elon Musk wants you to smell like burnt hair. Oh, no. We will tell you why. Oh, I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad we did this. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. I'm so glad we did this. Edward Jones. I recommend Nature Made Vitamins because I trust their quality. They were the first to be verified by USP, an independent organization that set strict quality and purity standards. Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. For your most brilliant smile, Crest has you covered. Nice smile, bro. 
nice. Yes. Crest 3D White, 100% more stain removal. Crest, the number one toothpaste brand in America. Time check is almost 520. Let's get another look at that morning commute. 281 right by the airport. You can see traffic's moving there without any trouble. 1604, though, looks pretty quiet. But there, John Peace, you can see that it's already starting to pick up now that we're obviously minute by minute getting closer to that morning rush hour. But I would say right now, still a good time to take your time. If you're at home, enjoy that cup of coffee because the drive to your destination this early in the morning is not going to be hindered with any problems. But as I mentioned a little bit earlier, there are those active construction spots, and you see a few of them already listed along our map right over there. Road closures to be on the lookout for. Uh, if you've been with us for a little while, you already know that there was a slowdown taking place uh, along 281 coming in from Mulverde, and this could be why we have some asphalt work that's taking place. Now, according to TxDOT, this actually begins today around 8 in the morning, should wrap around 3 in the afternoon, but sometimes those crews could get out there a little bit earlier, so that could obviously impact people's drive time. But right now, just expect a single southbound lane closure that will be from Marshall Road to Wilderness Oak. So, of course, I just updated that list of the closures for the month of October. So grab those phones right now. If you're still at home, open your camera app and scan that QR code. That will take you directly to our KSAT traffic page. Has a full list of all the closures that are current and taking place throughout the month of October. Guys, Stephen, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Hey, Mike, you know what I really love about this fall weather is yes. that I can walk my dogs even in the afternoon and they're still comfortable. Yes, and so are you. Uh, <laughs> now, today, a little bit different story just because we have some extra humidity out there, but it's not anything like it was in summer. So, yes, <clears throat> excuse me, it is much more pleasant to be outside. And here we have Georgie Boy is always a busy bee and uh, little Bo Peep is mommy's good witch. Mm. That's an adorable little picture there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect shot. Why is my clicker? Oh, here we go. You want so, me to help are you going you to space bar me? Sure. Thank you very much. I don't know what's going on here. Is the space bar working? No. Really? Okay. Of course. This is always so fun. Well, I'm going to sit here and tap dance right now, as we call it. And we've got uh, temperatures that are in the 60s right now. There is more humidity as we speak. I don't know what's going on with that over there. So for some reason, temperatures are in the 60s. And there's a little bit of a disturbance that's going to be sliding its way into some of our western counties. This isn't a bad picture to look at, though, as that's up there. And that little bit of a disturbance is going to touch off there we go one or two just let's see if I can I'm not getting anything going on here so if you guys want to keep space barring we are going to be seeing a couple of showers off to the west later on today 87 degrees for a high temperature that little disturbance may actually touch off a sprinkle or two here in town but I kind of doubt that and just one or two of those uh, those little uh, showers out there to the west and that would be about the extent of it as far yes you can't even tell if you're in show mode okay well, she's literally having to click on maps okay to, well to that's show. that's the uh, drought monitor that Okay. popped up from last week here. So yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here, but what I will tell you is that we, like I said, are going to hit a high temperature today of 87 degrees. And then tomorrow about the same situation. We are going to peak on Wednesday up to 92. Then a front's going to move on through here and that's going to not necessarily get us that much colder, but we are going to see some drier air come on in. So that'll get rid of the humidity. It's going to allow for a cooler, especially Friday morning down in the upper fifties here in town. That's going to be the coolest of the mornings, but then we're not going to be seeing any just like really, really cold fall weather around here. And over the weekend, we're going to see more clouds. I love how I'm getting help from all three of them over there. Thank you very much for this. We're going to see some more clouds Anyone over the weekend, and then we're going to also have a chance for some rain coming in here by this time next week. We are going to try and figure out. I'm going to walk over here to the three shot. Come on back, Sarah. I'll look at that. We'll just uh, continue on from here, and uh, we will have a chance for a uh, a couple of showers, maybe by late Sunday into Monday of next week. And like I said, today, a couple of showers out to the west, and that would be about it. Maybe a sprinkle here. The there, universal so. symbol for GMSA this morning is. Yeah, I, we, uh, I try I, to be your IT yeah. department with long with Steven. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even look like it's in show mode, but we'll try to get on that hopefully 523 yeah. and hopefully we'll come back and show you know at least a few maps in, in order there. 523, 66 degrees. All right, we're going to take a look at our lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, two, two, fireball six, daily four, two, five, five, eight. 
Fireball 7, Cash 5, 3, 7, 8, 20, 28. Texas Lotto, 23, 29, 35, 38, 40, 49. Let's look at that Powerball number. 13, 43, 53, 60, 68. Powerball 5, Power Play 2. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter is now urging users to reshare tweets instead of screenshots. Some Twitter users have seen pop-ups prompting them to share a link to tweets instead of a screenshot. It's the latest change to the platform to get people to use Twitter more. A new iPhone 14 feature is causing a bit of confusion. It's supposed to detect if you're in a car crash and alert 911, but something else is also triggering the emergency calls. Roller coasters. You can avoid the mix-up by switching to airplane mode. And Elon Musk is apparently branching out into the cologne business. He posted a picture on Twitter with a bottle of a fragrance called Burnt Hair. The gag gift will supposedly be marketed by Musk's boring company. He hasn't said if it's real. Why wouldn't he just call it Elon's Musk? I guess that wouldn't make sense. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Okay, that's two. <laughs> and the mock turtleneck. So what do we do with that, Sarah? I Festo? don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot to either. take in. <laughs> that is a lot at 528 on a Monday morning, 66 degrees. All right, investigation into documents found at former President Trump's house in Florida have reached the Supreme Court. What Trump is saying now about the Department of Justice and the FBI search. And Chick-fil-A is officially the slowest drive through according to a survey of fast food restaurants. Find out which restaurant gets their food out the door in less than four minutes. Former President Trump rallying supporters in swing states this holiday weekend. What he's facing later this week during a Department of Justice investigation. 65 degrees at 531 this morning. Mike says a cool front is on the way that could possibly bring some showers. But how much of a difference will it really make? He'll explain in a bit. Good morning. It is Monday, October 10th. We've also requested a cool front that doesn't require air quotes. Yes, yeah. but this one apparently Sorry. does, Mike. Still does. <laughs> yeah. And, and you were mentioning about the holiday, Columbus Day, which means a lot of federal offices are going to be uh, closed today, yeah, too. Yeah, Columbus so. Day and Indigenous Peoples Day. Right. And I've got the camera pointed off to the west to see if we can see, because the moon has not set yet, but I'm still trying to figure. It may be a little bit too, uh, too high still, but it is the, well, yesterday was technically the full moon. The hunter's moon should be gorgeous out there. We've got temperature at 66 degrees, 2.61. So that number, which was down in the 40s and low 50s late last week, has come up. You will notice the humidity when you step outside. It's not like you're going to be sweating when you walk outside, but you just notice a little bit more. And that's the situation around much of the area. 53 up there in Comfort for Dew Point, but then Kerrville right at 60, 61s all the way around the uh, metropolitan area, including uh, Lotus. And as far as the allergens, if you're sneezing and sniffling, maybe because of ragweed, which is on the high side, mold is low. Heading off to the pumpkin patch. We need to take some uh, some pictures. Not bad. Um, personally, I'd wait till later on in the week when there's a little bit less humidity. But uh, by later on this afternoon, right around three o'clock, just as school is getting out, 86, and we're going to be topping off today at 87 degrees. Couple of clouds out there, and also there may be a shower or two out to the west later on this afternoon. Just one or two of them, perhaps a sprinkle here in town. But uh, and that combined with the fact that we'll have less humidity late in the week. I'd wait till late in the week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, anything yet? Uh, not yet, Mike. Things have been pretty quiet over here. Let's get a look around town. If you are just waking up with us, 530 right now, a little past 530, I should say 533. Uh, commute's been pretty light this morning. 281 there at Hildebrand. You see just a few folks making their way out this early in the morning. Uh, no delays right now. 35 at Alamo. It is picking up just a bit, but maybe that holiday weekend will help out traffic and ease some of the congestion that we tend to see in and around the Alamo City. But right now, perfect time to just take advantage of this early morning and just get the day started slowly. Uh, let's get a look at here at the map there. You can see just a few active construction spots and we're going to continue to talk about that because there's plenty of road closures that you can expect to see throughout the month of October. But right now it doesn't look like anything is really slowing things down, at least just yet. Let's go ahead and get you to those travel times. And if you plan on getting behind the wheel and traveling right here to San Antonio, you are in the green. If you're traveling in from Seguin, 29 minutes at this hour on I-10 westbound. Usual 
usual drive time from Lavernia, a little more than 33 minutes on 87 North. And for our friends down in Floridasville, 28 minutes. So not too bad over there. But let's take it back to Transcott. And as we get another look there, 90 at Military, you can see that traffic is already moving out there. We're going to watch the roads closely. Have those updates on road closures right here on GMSA. Mark Stuff, Sarah. Thank you, sir. Updating late breaking news. A call about a crash has turned out to be even more serious for San Antonio police. They say the driver lost control of the car after someone shot her in the head. Katrina Weber is live in the 3500 block of Fredericksburg Road near Gardena Street. Now, Katrina, earlier you mentioned that police believe the woman saw trouble coming her way. Well, that's right. They say they got a call from someone who they believe was this woman saying that someone was either chasing or following her. The next call they got, which was around 345, was about this crash. This is the car the woman was in right here. She crashed, police say, after someone shot her. Now, they say that, again, this woman had called uh, to tell them someone was chasing or following her. They get a call about this crash. They find the woman in the car with a bullet wound in the back of her head. They believe the bullet came right through her window, went through the headrest and hit her in the head. Now, police say when they got to the car, there was still a call that was connected. This woman was in the process of talking to someone else. They were able to talk to the person at the other end of the phone line who says that he heard someone in the car with the woman telling her to go, go, as if she was being chased. Uh, they say, he says that the next thing he heard was a gunshot and then silence. The police say there was no one else in the car when they arrived. That passenger who was with her took off. Uh, they believe, though, that someone else shot her, possibly in another car, and that it happened just down the street past that motel that you probably see uh, in, in the distance there. So they're looking for surveillance video from that area to give them some more clues. And you can see uh, we have a tow truck here about to take off, uh, take away this car. Right now, police do have this part of Fredericksburg Road shut down, and they're asking drivers to go around. But as soon as they clear this, they say that they will open that street up again. So we expect uh, within the next half hour, this will be open again, but they, their case is still open, uh, that they are still looking for the person who shot this woman, apparently, as she drove down the street. Reporting live northwest of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. For pressure on former President Donald Trump is getting more intense. The House committee looking into the Capitol riots is set to hold what is likely one of its last hearings this week. And as a CNN's a Amy Kiley reports, questions over classified documents seized from Trump's Florida home have now reached the Supreme Court. Former President Donald Trump has been rallying supporters this past weekend as questions over his activities ratchet up. Here he is in Arizona. Election integrity, which uh, you didn't have a lot in your state. And in Nevada. We have a weaponized Department of Justice and FBI. He talked about the Justice Department investigation into the alleged mishandling of White House documents. Including the break-in of my home <laughs> concerning the so-called document hoax case. A dispute around that probe has reached the Supreme Court. It gave the DOJ until Tuesday to weigh in on whether a special master should have access to the classified documents involved. Then on Thursday, the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol riot is set to hold one of its final hearings. Honestly, this was a plot that began and was carried out with great intention by Trump world, including the president himself. Uh, utilizing uh, violent extremists. The panel is considering whether to make a criminal referral to the Justice Department about Trump's actions that day. We came very close uh, to seeing the democracy thrown overboard. We're not out of the woods. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Hurricane Julia made landfall in Nicaragua early Sunday as a Category 1 storm. The storm has sustained winds of 85 miles per hour when it moved ashore. Along with the hurricane-force winds, it also brought life-threatening rainfall of 6 to 10 inches with isolated amounts of up to 15 inches of rain. The storm is expected to weaken and approach the Pacific coast of Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala today and tonight. Well, jury selection begins today for convicted movie mogul Harvey Weinstein's second sex crime trial in Los Angeles. But since New York's highest court has given the 70-year-old Weinstein a chance of walking free,
The trial takes on new significance. Weinstein faces 11 charges involving the sexual assault of five women between 2004 and 2013 in Los Angeles and Beverly Hills. If convicted in California, he faces a life sentence regardless of the outcome of his New York appeal. El Paso has launched a dashboard so anyone can see how many migrants it serves. It shows that the city has served more than 14,900 migrants just since early September. According to the data, more than 8,000 have been bused to New York, 2,300 to Chicago since the end of August. They are offered city-funded journeys after being processed and released. Each day, border officials encounter an average of 1,500 migrants in the El Paso sector. About 70% of the migrants arriving at El Paso come from Venezuela. It's 539 and 65 degrees. Chick-fil-A was just named the slowest when it comes to fast food drive throughs Find out why customers really don't care and which drive through is the fastest. With it being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, hear from a leading radiation oncologist with UT Health San Antonio about what the biggest risk factors are right now. As you're sipping that first cup of morning coffee, let's go outside with Lycan as we wait for the sun to come up on another nice fall day. Let's get the week rolling. We'll continue GMSA after this. Welcome back, 542. The month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So Dr. Shredda Dwaldi, a breast radiation oncologist with UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson Cancer Center, joined us on Leading SA this week and to talk about the biggest risk factors of breast cancer. The doctor joined us and we talked about a lot of things. We talked about the risks, the different types of mammograms and how to lower those risks. Here's a little bit of our conversation. Now we talked about some of the risks. Uh, how can women lower the risk of getting breast cancer? So some basic principles are to eat healthy and nutritious food, exercise and keep your weight at a healthy level. Limit your alcohol intake as excessive alcohol use has been associated with breast cancer. Um, visit your doctor for regular examination and make sure that you're getting your mammograms as soon as you qualify. That was just a small portion of our conversation. You can check out the whole interview right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday at 8 a.m. So, guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. 543, 65 degrees. All right, which fast food line is the fastest and which one is the slowest? Find out if your favorite made the list. In your morning consumer headlines, ExxonMobil has been ordered to reinstate two scientists who were fired after being accused of leaking information to the media. So the, a federal whistleblower investigation found the energy giant terminated the two scientists Ill illegally in late 2020. In an article published last year, the Wall Street Journal reported that ExxonMobil might have inflated the value of its oil and gas wells here in Texas. The U.S. Department of Labor called ExxonMobil's actions unacceptable. The oil and gas giant was ordered to pay $800,000 in back wages, interest and damages to the two employees. When it comes to fast food, Taco Bell officially has the fastest drive through line and Chick-fil-A is the industry's slowest. It's according to the 2022 QSR drive through report. It says while Chick-fil-A may be the slowest, it's only because it's so popular and there are so many cars in line. While Chick-fil-A customers spent the most time in line, they don't seem to mind, giving the chain a 93% satisfaction rating for speed. The second slowest drive through McDonald's. However, customers also gave the chain high marks in terms of accuracy of orders filled. First place for fastest drive through went to Taco Bell with an average time of 221 seconds. That means most customers get their food in well under four minutes. Across the board, service was 10 seconds faster than last year when the pandemic caused more staff shortages and closed dining rooms. Service was still off the pre-pandemic 2019 pace when quick service restaurants got the food out 45 seconds faster on average. I don't mind the wait at Chick-fil-A. Most folks don't. You know? All right, Stephen, any wait times out there on the roads? Well, I agree with you, Sarah. I don't really mind the wait time as long as the customer service is good. That's right. all that matters, and that makes it worth the wait. But, uh, yeah, no slowdowns here. In fact, as you are getting your morning started, we get a look around town, 410 at Perrin Vital. You can see that maybe a few more folks out there now that we're inching closer to 6 a.m., 281 there at San Pedro. Just make sure you drive carefully. It's still pretty dark outside, obviously, from what we're seeing from these TransGuide cameras. But, thankfully, nothing major 
closure is slowing people down. We talk about those road closures and before we get to that, it looks like there may have been an incident that popped up right there along I 10, not far from crossroads and 410. We'll find out what that is, but you can see those scattered road closures in and around the Alamo City. Let's talk what's taking place here along State Highway 16, but we know it as Bandera Road utility work that will actually begin tonight, October 10th and wrap on Friday, October 14th. Again, this is overnight, nine in the evening to five in the morning. So those late night owls, early bird commuters, make sure that you give yourself time and drive carefully through the area. What you're going to see out there is multiple lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Diamond K Trail. But you know where to find that information. That's right on our website, KSAT.com slash traffic. But back here, traffic is moving a okay. Yes. Not bad for a Monday, Not Mr. Cavazos. Monday. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. And Mike, you have a beautiful picture behind you. Yeah. I almost thought this was in the mountains, but that's when clouds can look like mountains. Yeah, and this was Saturday evening because it says full tomorrow, and it was actually full uh, yesterday. But boy, what a gorgeous, gorgeous moon. That is just so pretty. Should be seeing about the same thing this evening with the uh, nice little orange glow as it is just rising just as the sun is uh, is setting. But thank you very much for that one. All right, still speaking on the moon, trying to find it here. And I believe it's still just above this camera angle, but that appears to be the uh, the planet Jupiter and the moon is right behind that. So I'm going to keep the camera pointed over here and hopefully we can see the moon setting uh, before the, uh, the morning is over. All right, we have a front moving through this week, but notice how it's not even going to put high temperatures back down to normal readings. We may cool down a bit Monday, but that's a different story. But this front's going to come through preceding it. We'll be up to 92 degrees on Wednesday. It's going to be very warm. The humidity is there this morning. And then what the front's going to do, yes, it will knock us back down closer to normal readings, but it's going to get rid of the humidity. So therefore, the low temperature by Friday morning is going to be sort of jacket weather, especially in the hill country. We'll be down to 58 here in town. Then it sort of rebounds somewhat as we get in toward the weekend because we're going to have more clouds around here over the weekend. Today we've got a lot of clear skies out there. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise and moon set this morning. We'll drop down to 65 degrees and then warm up through the 70s this morning, 83 at noon. A few more clouds hanging around here. And I've got this 20% chance for a couple of showers, 87 for a high temperature. That's taking into account some showers that are going to be popping up in parts of the hill country. You can see way out to west of our area. There is some of this rain, this disturbance out there, <clears throat> excuse me, which is throwing some energy into the into the hill country later on today. And so that's what this computer model does depict this afternoon. Just a couple of those showers popping up out there, one or two of them. I don't even know if 20% that may be kind of pushing things, but there also could be a few sprinkles here in town. Very few and far between. Not a big deal. Just don't be surprised if you uh, if you see anything like that. And then going into tomorrow after some morning clouds, a lot of sunshine in the afternoon. So here's the uh, the big picture of things. We've got that low out to the west. That's what's kind of throwing some of that energy in here. And then the high is pretty much setting up camp basically in the, the Gulf of Mexico. Not a real fall type weather pattern. Still have these big chunks of cold air way up there to the north in Canada coming in toward the Great Lakes. And this is the one that's going to be throwing the front through here early on Thursday. Not a huge blast of cold air, but just again, basically that drier air, which will be moving on in here. Friday, Saturday, Sunday look pretty nice, although we will see an increase of clouds coming in for the weekend. And then it does also look like by Monday, Tuesday, we have a chance for some rain and another somewhat of a front trying to slide on through here. Again, not a huge blast of cold air, but just kind of trim things off a little bit and at least give us a chance for some rain about this time next week. 83 degrees, mostly sunny skies at noon, and then we'll see a couple of more clouds, a few showers off to the west, a couple of sprinkles here in town possible, 87 for a high temperature today. And then tomorrow, we're going to be starting off definitely on the mild side, about three, four degrees above normal each end of the, uh, the scale. 92, that's going to be hot on Wednesday. Front moves through, may squeeze out a couple of showers early, late, late Wednesday, early Thursday. And then Thursday is going to be a beautiful day. Nice chilly start Friday morning and then more clouds over the weekend. Hopefully chance of rain about this time next week. Did you hear it? Did you hear the key word there? Chilly. Chilly. Chilly start. 58 degrees. I mean, yeah. that's nice. That's sweater weather. There you go. Yes, for 
one morning. For well, a, Saturday morning will for be For a couple cool of season. hours in the morning. For a couple of hours. We'll take what we can get, Nice. Though. Absolutely. Finally get to layer a little bit. I also took the hint and added chili to my curbside order for later today. So thank you very much, Mike Ostrich. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 553, 65 degrees. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick 3, 822, Fireball 6. Daily 4, 255, 8, Fireball 7. The rest of your numbers as I pull up Mega and Powerball. Well, Powerball's up to $401 yeah, million. No dollars. winner. Mega's up to 445 Cash 5 numbers 378, 2028. 20, Lotto Texas 23, 29, 35, 38, 40, 49. And Powerball 13, 43, 53, 60, 68. Powerball 5, Power Play 2. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are following the latest on the new escalation from Vladimir Putin in Ukraine. Multiple strikes on Ukraine's major cities. Our team is on the scene. And then we're less than a month from midterm elections. This morning, we're going to break down the key races and tell you what it's going to take for each party to control the Senate and House. That and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead the next hour, GMSA, lots of people seem to be unhappy with their jobs which is why a new trend called quiet quitting is becoming more common. We'll tell you why you may not want to join that trend. I was staying on top of this morning's late breaking news, a woman fighting for her life as we speak after she was shot in the head on the northwest side. We'll tell you what San Antonio police know so far. Trans guide right now. See how things are looking out there. Loop 410 at Perimbido. A few more cars out there. It is a holiday today, so that may affect traffic somewhat, but we'll get you updated coming up. At the top of the hour, you're watching GMSA on a Monday. Ahead this hour, an early morning shooting just northwest of downtown sends a woman to the hospital. We'll tell you how she's doing and if police know anything about the shooter. Elon Musk is reportedly entering the fragrance industry and you'll never guess what scent will be in his first bottle. The huge road win against the defending world champs. Now they get set for their biggest game of the season so far against a division rival. We'll tell you what a win next week would mean for their playoff hopes. Mike says a cool front is on the way that could bring some potential showers. But really, is this a real cool front? He'll explain in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It's never good when he Mike is giggling in the corner about our <laughs> weather team. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, October 10th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Yeah, when I say real cool front, like you're thinking fall, like like 20, 30 degree temperature drop kind yeah. of thing. When, yeah, yeah, when that did the, the high school kids get to bring out their Letterman's, like, you know, wear a scarf, any of that stuff happening? Uh, yeah, when temperatures, like you were saying, drop down 15, 20 degrees, you get that smell. No. No. Oh, okay. uh, this will <laughs> knock some humidity out by later on in the week. Yes, and it will knock temperatures down slightly, but that's because ahead of it, we're going to be way on the warm side of things. So back to the Cowboys very quickly. What do you do when Dak Prescott comes back? Because placement's 4-0 right now. Don't bring him back. You you <laughs> take your time bringing Dak back because at this point, you, you're you doing just fine. Don't touch anything. Yeah. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Anyway, back to the weather. Uh, this, uh, it looks like the planet Jupiter right there, and the moon is just still out of this shot. It is, of course, one day past full. It's going to be a good-looking moon set and sunrise. 66 in town, 62 Converse, 59 in Comfort, as well as Rio Medina, the only two 50s on the map. And just kind of compare that to last week when we had a whole bunch of 50s and even 40s. And one of the reasons is we've got a lot more humidity out there this morning. These numbers, dew points, are in most cases above 60, which means it's not like it pushes back at you, but you notice the humidity when you step outside, and that's going to be the situation for the next couple of days. Ragweed is very high. Mold is on the low side. And throughout the rest of the morning, we may drop another couple of degrees here and there with mostly clear skies. Then we'll have a couple of more clouds developing, especially later on this afternoon. We're going to be at 83 at noon and then top off today at 87, which is a couple of degrees above normal. There is also a very small chance for one or two showers hours out in some of our western counties. Little disturbances moving on through there and we'll sort of be here in town sort of on the eastern edge of that. So perhaps a sprinkle this afternoon, but I really wouldn't get too excited about uh, any rain chances. Again, just one or two of those out to the west. We'll talk about the 
Well, we've got to use the air quotes. The front coming through. Yes, technically it is a front, but not the big one we're hoping for. We'll see what that does and then take a look ahead to the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, anything going on yet? Yeah, it's been pretty quiet, Mike, uh, but that's not a bad thing as we get a look around town. 281 right there by the airport. Uh, different shot there. Friends at Transguide were able to get us a shot of the roadways and the conditions, but it doesn't look too bad as we get a look around town. There's 1604 John Peace and 10 at Frio. Yeah, we get a few more folks around this hour. That's always anticipated but thankfully there is no issues out on the roadways at this point. So just remember to take it easy right now. Wouldn't say it's a rush hour situation, but of course always drive carefully. We take you right to the map and as I've showed you throughout the last hour or so, it has just been quiet and we like that for a Monday morning as people are starting their new week. But let's take you to those travel times because the destination to the Alamo City, if you're planning on traveling here, isn't too bad either. It's still pretty pleasant on I-37 northbound traveling in from Pleasanton 28 minutes, so about half an hour on Highway 90 eastbound if you're traveling in from Castroville this early in the morning. And that arrival from Lytle looks to be about 16 minutes on I-35 northbound. So things are in good shape so far as we start this new week, but taking it back here, 410 at Broadway. Traffic's moving okay. We'll have a close eye on the roadways, but as always, make sure you keep both eyes on the road as well. Guys. Stephen, thank you. San Antonio police hope surveillance video might provide them with some clues about an overnight shooting. The victim was driving a car when she was shot. She crashed just northwest of downtown on Fredericksburg Road near Gardena Street. Our Katrina Weber is there live now. That scene, Katrina, looks different from how it did just 30 minutes ago. Police have cleared out, so does that mean they're done with their investigation? No, it really just means that they're done. They've done all they can for now. They told us that they do plan to come back later after some of these businesses open and see if they can get a look at their surveillance cameras. Now, the street is open now, but that's not how it was all morning long. Let me give you a look at the video so you can see uh, what we saw up until just about 20 minutes ago or so. Police had this area, 3500 block of Fredericksburg Road, shut down since about 345 this morning. That's when they got a call about a car that had crashed. Officer arrived. They checked out the driver who was inside that car and realized she had a bullet wound to the back of her head. Police say someone shot right through her window. The bullet went through the headrest and hit her in the head. Now, police say that same woman had called them a few minutes earlier to say that someone was either chasing or following her. The officers got here. They found out that she was on the phone with someone else at the time of the shooting. That person was still on the phone. Officers were able to talk to that man who told them that she she had a passenger in the car with her. He heard the passenger tell her to go as if someone was chasing them. He heard a gunshot and then he says things went silent. Police did not find the passenger who was with the woman. They are still looking uh, for whoever shot her. They believe that was someone else possibly in another car. And so that takes us to where they are looking for that surveillance video to sort of fill in some of the gaps that they have in this information. And they do believe that that shooting happened right down the Fredericksburg Road, down near that bus stop there. So they're looking for videos specifically from that area to provide them with some more clues. Reporting live northwest of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. It's been nearly six years and San Antonio police are still looking for the person responsible for killing a man over on the city's west side. It happened back on October 11th of 2016. Officers say the person you see on your screen, 37 year old and Angelo Palendo, was shot and killed on North Sabina Street, not too far from 10 and Culebra. Now details are still limited, but police say someone in a gray vehicle was seen speeding away from that area after several gunshots were heard. Can have you registered to vote. So tomorrow is the deadline. Any U.S. citizen who is 18 years old by Election Day on November 8th can register. You can register by mail or in person at the Bear County Elections Office or a variety of other locations. We have that list available. Just scan the QR code on your screen. And with the crucial midterm elections less than a month away, control of Congress is at stake. And now one of the most controversial candidates is getting a new show of support from leaders of his own party. ABC's Andrew Denberg has a story. This morning, more Republicans are pledging support for Herschel Walker, the Senate candidate in Georgia facing fallout over reports that he once paid for a woman's abortion. Well, I think people make mistakes. Congressman Don Bacon standing by Walker. I've made my own mistakes in life, and Herschel has too. We all have. 
I think it's better just to be honest. Walker, a staunch anti-abortion candidate, denies allegations published in the Daily Beast that he paid for a woman's abortion in 2009. And the New York Times reports Walker urged the same woman to have a second abortion two years later, but she refused, giving birth to his child. ABC News has not independently confirmed the reports. I said this, this here, the abortion thing is false. It's a lie. The stakes are high in next month's midterm elections with control of the House and Senate hanging in the balance. Some people are trying to have us go back to 1922, and that's, that's not the correct way. And emotions running high with abortion rights and inflation among the key issues. Election offices across the country are now boosting security. In Flagstaff, Arizona, one election office will be barricaded by bulletproof glass. And the walls of an election office in Tallahassee, Florida, are being fortified with Kevlar. The website 538 now gives Republicans a 70% chance of winning a majority in the House, but only a 33% chance of winning back the Senate. Republican leaders are focusing on states where Senate races are a toss-up. The Republican Senatorial Committee Chair, Senator Rick Scott, will campaign with Herschel Walker tomorrow in Georgia, where Senator Raphael Warnock holds a slight lead in the polls. In Pennsylvania, Republicans are dumping millions of dollars into the Senate race. A new poll shows Republican Mehmet Oz closing the gap on John Fetterman, 46 to 40. Back in June, Fetterman held a nine-point lead in the same poll. Nevada is another Senate race to watch. Polls show the Trump-backed candidate with a two-point edge over the Democrat. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Here at home, voters will decide on a new Bear County judge. For the first time in more than 20 years, Peter Sakai or Trish DeBerry will take over for the retired Nelson Wolf. And right now, you can read more about the two candidates on KSAT.com. A reminder, Election Day is coming up fast on November 11th. In your morning consumer news, the new iPhone 14 is causing a bit of a confusion. It's supposed to detect if you're in a car crash and alert 911. You maybe have seen the commercials, but something else is also triggering emergency calls. Roller coasters. Apple is saying you can avoid the mix-up by switching your phone to airplane mode. Oh, all right. Elon Musk apparently branching out into the cologne business. He posted a picture on Twitter of a bottle with the fragrance labeled burnt hair. So the gag gift will supposedly be marketed by Musk Boring Company. He hasn't said if it's real. I hope We hope not. not. <laughs> <laughs> you read my mind, Sarah Costa. 610, 65 degrees. Well, much more to come on GMSA. Coming up a little later, we'll tell you why so many people in the workforce are quietly quitting. We'll explain what that means. Breaking overnight, explosions heard in the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. I'm ABC's Jay O'Brien. That plus the Kremlin's response to that massive bridge explosion over the weekend coming up. Outside with live cam, still a little while to go before the sun comes up. But we are so glad you're with us here on KSAT and GMSA. We're back after this break. 614 this morning, a strategic city in Ukraine is still recovering after a stunning Russian missile strike that killed more than a dozen civilians. It came after Russian President Vladimir Putin accused Ukrainian forces of blowing up a critical bridge connecting Russia to the occupied territory of Crimea. The attack is a major symbolic blow to Putin as Ukrainian troops continue to make gains on the battlefield. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more. Good morning. Russian state media is reporting that Vladimir Putin will meet with his top officials today in a meeting. It comes as the Kremlin is responding to that massive bridge explosion over the weekend and launching missile attacks at Ukrainian civilians. Overnight, large explosions heard in the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky confirming the explosions are from Russian missile attacks in multiple cities, saying Russia is trying to, quote, wipe us off the face of the earth. It comes as the Ukrainian city of Zaporizhia is still reeling from a Russian missile strike Sunday that killed at least 17 civilians. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin is now labeling the massive explosion Saturday at a crucial Russian bridge a terrorist attack. Ukraine has not directly claimed responsibility. As Ukrainian forces continue making tactical gains in occupied regions in the country's south and east, President Biden's stirring warning saying Putin is not joking when making nuclear threats now hangs over the conflict. The White House saying there is no new intelligence that Putin is planning an imminent use of nuclear weapons. 
Putin has also appointed a new general, Sergei Surovikin, to oversee military operations in Ukraine. He's best known for what's been described as total ruthlessness during bombing campaigns in Syria. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. All right, let's get a look here at home at the commute. You can, uh, the commute you can expect this early in the morning. There's 410 at Perrin Bidal. Uh, getting busier out there, but hey, there's no problems to talk about this early in the morning, and that's always good news. Uh, let's just get a quick look, see what's taking uh, place around town. There's 281 right there at Bassey. Uh, really not a lot of traffic at this point, but there at 90 at Nogalitos, always one of those busy spots as people are maybe traveling in from Castroville. But you can see from a lot of these views at Transguide, the roads are pretty uh, quiet right now in terms of the issues. It's been a very quiet morning as we're starting the work week, and we like to say that. Taking you right here to the map, of course, what we have been talking about are those active road closures that you can expect to see. And here's what I actually encountered yesterday. Lock Hill Selma Road right here in Bear County. Uh, utility work that's actually been ongoing since October 2nd. We're going to see part of that continue up until Friday, October 14th. It does play, take place overnight, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Drivers, that's when you'll see an alternating lane closure in both directions right there at the Wurzbach Parkway intersection. A pretty busy area in town, and hey, if you have to hit the roads in the next few minutes, grab those phones right now before you get out there. Scan the QR code. Know what to expect before you get behind the wheel. Scanning that QR code will take you directly to our KSAT traffic page, and it has a full list of all the closures throughout the month of October. Guys, I'm kind of hoping since today's a holiday, we may see yeah. overall lighter traffic. And maybe that's why uh, it's mm -hmm. a holiday. And so maybe some folks are getting to enjoy uh, sleeping in or enjoying their cup of coffee at home. Yes, sir. Having to rush it. Thank you, Stephen. I assume are a lot of folks. I'm going to roll the bus anyway. Yeah. Roll the bus yeah, yeah, anyway yeah. out of tradition. Yeah. But I think a lot of uh, schools have off today. Yeah, but uh, we'll drop down maybe a couple more degrees from where we are right now. Most of the clear skies. There's a bit more humidity. You're going to notice it when you step outside. And then 87 high temperature. We will be a few degrees on the warm side of normal and partly cloudy skies. A couple of those showers off to the west. Just one or two of them out there and maybe a sprinkle here in town, but uh, not really a good chance at that. Okay, love this. I've got two from Skywatcher today. This half hour and next half hour. And I love the, uh, the ode to Alfred Hitchcock and the birds. And then, of course, with angry birds too. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he's launching them. There's that one. And I guess this guy's just running from the birds, sort of a la Tippy Hedren from the movie. Again, the Denote family up in Stone Oaks having a lot of fun this month. And there's the little guy sitting right there. Where's the dog? Anybody see it? Uh, we usually get emails after is saying Is the dog it was being launched or is it a, another little guy being I, launched? Or is that somebody with the bird? I think that's somebody with no, a that, bird. That's somebody. Oh, the yeah. dog. No, the dog's on top of the little crate there. What, what's going to happen oh, is right we're, we're yeah. going to have the okay. guy that sends these pictures come in with a telestrator and go, yeah. okay, Mike, it's right. It's right <laughs> about here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, two pictures. Yeah, one with all the arrows pointing to everybody. All right. The moon, uh, which is right up there, not quite in this shot as of yet, but uh, it's going to be a gorgeous moon set and nice uh, sunrise. Dew point temperature, sort of the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. This is how we figure out relative humidity are definitely up this morning. A good uh, four, six, eight, uh, 13 degrees there in Rock Springs. You can definitely feel and sort of smell the humidity this morning. We'll drop down to 65 and then plenty of sunshine up until uh, roughly about noon, 83 degrees. A couple of more clouds going to work their way in here and there's that 20% chance for a couple of showers out to the west, 87 for a high temperature today. Computer model and I think does a pretty good job. One or two of those showers popping up later on this afternoon. Could see a sprinkle here in town. They will definitely be a uh, few and far between at best. Then as far as the front moving on through here, which is going to be late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, there's another shot at some rain early, early on Thursday as that front moves on through. Not a big chance, but at least we do have another shot at some rain. So 83 degrees again at noon today, mostly sunny skies, then a high temperature up to 87. One or two of those showers, just again, a 20% chance out there to the west and then a sprinkle here in town. Tomorrow, a lot like today, with the exception of no rain and then very warm, downright hot on Wednesday, 92. And the front moves through overnight into Thursday, breezier on Thursday and drier air comes in here. So it's going to be a gorgeous afternoon on Thursday, chilly Friday morning, 58 degrees and then low to mid 60s over the weekend. A lot more clouds over the weekend and a, a chance of rain again by late Sunday next Monday.
bless you. Bless you for, for Friday morning oh, yeah. in advance. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing great things. Doing great. So it'll, it'll be really good weather for you to run and get uh, tacos for us. I'm always aware. That you're as subtle as a thunderstorm, Mike Osterhage. <laughs> 621, 65 degrees. <laughs> KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. When honoring your loved one, don't forget the salt. When a spirit makes its journey back to the world of the living, it's believed salt protects their soul from corruption during their stay. Salt also represents the earth, which is one of the Aztecs' four elements of nature. It's usually placed in clay vessels or in the shape of a cross on the bottom level beside other elements of purification. When your loved one's visit is over, make sure they're pure for their journey back. So don't forget the salt. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I'm asking about Prevnar 20 because there's a chance pneumococcal pneumonia could put me in the hospital. If you're 19 or older with certain chronic conditions like COPD, asthma, or diabetes, you may be at an increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Prevnar 20 is approved in adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most common side effects were pain and swelling at the injection site, muscle pain, fatigue, headache, and joint pain. I want to be able to keep my plans. That's why I chose to get vaccinated with Prevnar 20. Because just one dose can help protect me from pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20 today. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Cowboys and Texans both back in action Sunday afternoon during week five in the NFL. Both teams on the road, starting with the Texans. They went into Sunday's matchup with Jacksonville winless. While the Jags got on the board, fir board first, they never found the end zone. Houston gets the first one of the season in a low-scoring affair. The final from Jacksonville. Texans win at 13-6. Houston will have its bye week this coming weekend and will be back in action October 23rd when they take on the Raiders in Las Vegas. Meanwhile, Cowboys with a road matchup against the defending Super Bowl champ LA Rams. Dallas has looked strong so far this season. That trend continued yesterday afternoon. They get the win easily over the struggling Rams. The final from SoFi Stadium, Cowboys win 22 to 10. Next up, a huge game on Sunday night in Philadelphia against their division rival the Eagles who sit undefeated in first place in the NFC East. If the Cowboys can get the road win, they would move into first place. That game is set for 720 Sunday night in Philadelphia. Huge game with huge implications. Go oh, Cowboys. All right, 626 at 64 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA. We're staying on top of this morning's late breaking news. A woman in the hospital with a gunshot wound to the head. How she's doing and what police know so far, that's in a bit. A call about a car crash leads police to discover something completely different. They say the driver had been shot in the head. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why police also believe she may have seen this coming. And they kept on saying that either it was tr garbage, garbage yes. or a dead animal. No, that's my brother-in-law laying in there. Family and friends of a man who has not been seen for weeks say their search is over after a discovery on the northeast side of town. We'll tell you why police say their investigation is not over. Outside with live cam, more humid this morning as we see the, some of the moonshine out there right now. Getting ready for a sunrise, not the kind you drink, Mike. Uh, <laughs> good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is October 10th. I uh, love how Mike perked up during that. Hey, congratulations to Mark. He participated in a fishing tournament over the weekend, and you actually placed in the top 100. I did, yeah. Deal. My second tournament ever. Finished 97th out of 187. Nice. So, Way to yeah. go, Mark. It was fun, but I'm, I'm tired this morning. But it's good to be here this <laughs> morning with proper amount of caffeine. Anything can be done. Yes, indeed. And nice start this morning. We do have a little bit more humidity out there. Uh, it's been slowly creeping up over the past couple of days. And uh, we've got a lot of clear skies. And as you can see, right at the very top of your screen up there, just above the, uh, the essay, that's the, uh, the moon, which is setting one day 
past full. Gorgeous out there, and we're going to have a lot of clear skies this morning. There's a little bit better view of it right there. Uh, 66 degrees. The humidity dew points at 61. Not real thick humidity, but just enough to where you step outside and go, yeah, it's kind of humid out there. Not much of a breeze to speak of as of right now. These uh, temperatures around the area, 57 Bernie Stage Comfort, 58 in Bulverde. Everybody is, uh, I mean, again, compared to last week, midweek, we were down in the 40s and 50s around here. So it is milder, more humidity. Two points are mid upper 50s and low 60s around much of the area. Ragweed is on the high side in case you're sniffling from that. Mold is low and most of the clear skies, a little more humid this morning, and then later on this afternoon, a little disturbance is going to work its way through our western counties. May touch off a couple of showers out there, and then, you know, light shower sprinkle here in town is possible. Just don't be surprised if there's one. It's going to be warmer midweek, 92 on Wednesday. Then a cold front moves through here. No, it's not going to be a huge blast of cold air, but it will get rid of the humidity. Much, much drier air. That's going to allow temperatures to dip down. It's going to be chilly then, especially Friday morning. And then the weekend, we will still be about normal, a little bit on the warm side, mid 80s, mid 60s and Decent right now, a decent chance for some rain late this weekend going into the first part of next week. Of course, a lot can change between now and then, but right now, clear skies. How about the roads? Are they clear? Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's the latest? I've had an easy morning over here, Mike. Uh, we get a look we get a look around town 10 at Hackberry. This is going to be a pretty short traffic hit because you can see, yeah, the commute's getting a little bit busier, and that's always expected around this time, but you can see from the Shots of Trans Guide, People are going to have a smooth sail this morning as they get out on the roadways. There's 35 at Alamo. It is picking up, though, so just always be mindful of that. While there haven't been any issues reported just yet, uh, still, we're going to have people out there on the roadways today. Even though it is Columbus Day, some folks may stay at home. Others may still have to head out to work or another destination, but just drive carefully. We get you to the map, and what we have been talking about, of course, throughout the morning have been those road closures. You can see that we have them right there on our map, and as long as it stays quiet, we get to talk about those road closures closures and I'll do that in the next few minutes or so. But right now as we show you the map, it's just been clear and quiet all morning long. It's almost been a copy and paste situation. Uh, typically around this time we start to see slowdowns along 90 and 281. Not the case this morning, uh, but that could change in 15 minutes or so. But thankfully right now as we get it back here on Transguide, things don't look too bad at all. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. Let's get to our top story. Was it road rage? That's one of several scenarios that San Antonio police are considering when it comes to an overnight shooting. A woman was shot in the head as she drove down Fredericksburg Road. Our Katrina Weber is there live at 3500 block of Fredericksburg near Gardena Street. Now, Katrina, we understand there is still one witness who police have not had a chance to question. Well, that's right. They believe that this woman had a passenger in the car with her, a man who was gone by the time officers arrived. The police found out about the shooting after getting a call about a crash after 3.30 this morning. They say when paramedics checked out the driver of that crash car, they realized she had a bullet wound in the back of her head. Officers say the bullet went right through the headrest and hit her. Now, police say they also found out that the driver was talking to someone on the phone at the time when she was shot. That person was still on the line and talked to officers. He said he could hear a man in the car with the woman telling her to speed up. Then he heard a gunshot and everything went silent. The woman was rushed to a hospital in critical condition. Police are still trying to find her passenger. They're also planning to look at surveillance video from this area to try to figure out who the shooter was. Now, one other curious thing is just before all of this happened, police believe that same woman had called them to tell them that someone was either following her or chasing her. So a lot of investigations still going on regarding this case. Reporting live northwest of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Funeral services happening later today for longtime Bear County Judge Karen Crouch. Last week, Judge Crouch died from injuries she sustained in a car crash that happened back in 2011. Her sister-in-law died in that head-on collision caused by a teenage driver in Vermont. Crouch was on the bench for over two decades before retiring in 2018 to focus on her family and her health. Funeral services will be held at San Antonio Presbyterian on San Pedro Avenue. A viewing will be held from 4 to 7 p.m. And a worship service begins at 7 o'clock this evening. Judge Karen Crouch was 62 years old. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help solving a deadly hit and run case. Now back on September 26th around 
1.30 in the morning, SAPD says this man on your screen, 51-year-old Henry Arizola, was hit from behind while riding a bicycle along the Enrique Barrera Parkway. So the driver fled the scene without stopping to help Arizola, who later died. If you have any information on this case, call Crime Stoppers, that number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. You could get a cash reward for the information you provide. A group of friends searching for a man who disappeared about a month ago say they found his body. This all was unfolding yesterday near Judson Road and I-35. Family and friends believe they found 52-year-old Keith Hammond because they recognized his boots. Live Oak Police considered him a person of interest in connection to the death of a woman found three weeks ago in the same area. However, the medical examiner's office has not yet confirmed the body is Hammond's. The family is upset with police for not finding the body sooner and say police dropped the ball in this investigation. You didn't do your job yep. that we pay you to do. I can tell you we have been out here at least two or three more times checking the area. Uh, obviously, we did not find the person. Live Oaks Assistant Chief Matt Malone says their work isn't done and they're still looking into a cause of death. Tonight, the Evaldi CISD school board is meeting for the first time after a fallout from hiring a former DPS officer who responded to Robb Elementary on May 24th. Now, since then, the entire district police force has been suspended and the superintendent has announced his retirement. In an email sent Friday, Evaldi CISD super Dr. Hal Herrell wrote about his 31 years in education. He told staff he wanted them to be the first to know, quote, there will be an item in closed session to consider and discuss superintendent retirement options and transition, end quote. The board can choose to take action afterwards. Families of the victims have made it clear they didn't ask for this. All they asked for Harold was for Harold to suspend the district officers who were there that day. As far as, you know, how Harold, I know the community is really upset. A lot of people love him, myself included. But it's about leadership right now, and it's about supporting us families. I wish more people in the community understood that. We fight for all the children and the two teachers that lost their lives that day. How should it be fighting for them, too? These were his employees. These were students in his district. Now, UCISD's board meeting will happen in the Benson boardroom at 6 o'clock tonight, Uvalde. We have been made aware of a rally in support of Dr. Hale at 5.30 p.m. outside that boardroom. We'll be at both those events covering live updates on air and online on our website, ksat.com. Well, some other top stories we're following this morning. Cleanup is underway after Russia unleashed a barrage of strikes against Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin is calling the blast that ripped through a key bridge connecting Russia to Crimea a terrorist act. Russian officials say explosives were hidden in a truck traveling on one of the spans. The attack, a major symbolic blow to Putin, and also damaged a critical supply route for Russian forces. It comes as Russia's military continues to target residential areas of Ukraine. In Venezuela, at least 25 people are dead. More than 50 people are still missing this morning after a landslide Sunday. It happened following several days of heavy rainfall. So that landslide was caused by an overflow of five streams in the north central part of the country. More than 1,000 officials from the country's national risk management system and police officers are participating in a search and rescue plan. The country's president declared three days of national mourning in support of the families whose loved ones were lost. And crews in southwest Florida continue to search the wreckage for victims of Hurricane Ian. This video you're seeing right now is from Fort Myers, where there was the largest number of deaths. Dive teams are still checking submerged cars and destroyed structures, and it could be days or weeks before their search comes to an end. So far, at least 119 people lost their lives in that hurricane. Well, back here at home, a blood drive is happening this Thursday, October 13th. The first 400 blood donors will get a pair of Spurs tickets to the season opener. It'll be from 8.30 in the morning to 1.30 in the afternoon at the AT&T Center. Previous Spurs blood drives have helped more than 1,200 patients. 640 and 64 degrees. Glad you're with us still ahead on GMSA. Are you unhappy with your job? We'll tell you about something called quiet quitting and my, why you might want to think twice before you try that trend. 
644, you may not find this altogether surprising because new data shows that one in four workers have either quit their jobs this year or are planning to quit in the next few months. Experts say the pandemic left employees burnt out and a new trend is emerging and it's called quiet quitting. Quiet quitting. Max Massey reports it could hurt both employers and employees. I'm proud to be an American and believe in disseminating the truth. And that is why after this newscast, I'm resigning. Company exits. Some were loud. Jared, I'm here to tell you that I'm quitting. While some, not so loud. I went out to get my letter of resignation. It's an I'm sorry for your loss card. And it says it's me, you're losing me. And now quiet quitting is all the talk on social media. I recently learned about this term called quiet quitting, where you're not outright quitting your job, but you're quitting the idea of going above and beyond. They're just going to their jobs and then just doing the job from, from nine to five. And then, and then, and then hold, hold up, that's just working. That's work. Quiet quitters do exactly what's required. No more, no less. No answering emails, texts, or calls at night or on the weekend. A recent Gallup poll found the main reason for this trend well, unfair treatment at work, unmanageable workloads, lack of respect, inconsistent compensation, and favoritism. And although quiet quitters may feel more balanced in their life, experts say they risk being demoted, laid off, even fired. Quiet quitting is a really bad idea. The whole point is you're there to make the business work. Experts worry that due to inflation, employees may not realize that companies are already looking for ways to cut costs. And if you're not being productive, the quiet quitters may be the first to go. A better option if you're not happy at work, have frequent one-on-ones with your manager. Discuss challenges and opportunities. Gather support from your coworkers and your friends. Be decisive. It's better to leave a job you hate than hate the job you're in. On the flip side, employers are now quiet firing. That's when employers treat you so badly that you're actually gonna leave your job. Some examples are not getting that yearly raise or bonus, shifting important work to others and deliberately leaving you out of meetings. So before you think about quiet quitting, think about whether you're ready to be quiet fired. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Max. 646. All right, we're going to check in with the roads one more time. Stephen Cavazos. Yeah. No, things had been quiet over here, <laughs> but uh, we do have those flashing lights, unfortunately. 35 at 37. Uh, this hasn't been reported just yet, so we do have a shot from TransGuide, but I'll get them on the phone. But what it looks like is actually probably a stall vehicle, so traffic's picking up in this particular area of town. Of course, good news is we do have a hero truck out there with the flashing lights as well, so uh, try to watch out for them. It's very dark still, so you got to give them the room they need to get the job done. We'll find out exactly where that location is, but right now you can see traffic is coming at us uh, and there's a lot going on out there. But we take you to the map and it's actually a different story. 647, you know, we usually see those slowdowns right here along US 90, 1604, uh, as well as uh, 281. Nothing reported as far as slowdowns just yet, but I have to take you in over here uh, close to 1604 in the eastbound lanes right there at Bulverde Road. A crash has been reported by text or pardon me by the San Antonio police, but we're not seen any cameras out there that can get us a peek at the conditions just yet. But what we are seeing is a slowdown in those eastbound lanes of 1604. So you got to watch out over there as well. As always, in any case, we hope everybody's OK. But the big topic has also been those road work. So just a quick reminder over here off 281. This work will actually take place later to mor this morning, eight in the morning. That is to three in the afternoon right there along 281. Uh, this is going to take place uh, and we're going to see some single southbound lane closures from Marshall Road to Wilderness Oak. That information is on our website ksat.com slash traffic. You can head over there for more information, but we'll be keeping a close mm -hmm. eye on the roadways. Thankfully, uh, it's been quiet, but we do have a few issues that are popping up, so just be careful out there. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, Mike has an update with our skeleton family. What's going on? The caption. Remember this. Ah, my lips touched in the Charlie Brown dog lips, but dog bones. Ah, poison dog bones. Dog, remember they were bobbing for apples? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and Lucy came up and was right there, and then Snoopy kissed her on the lips. So that's what they're referring to, and there they are trick or treating. And I was just looking, I think that's one Charlie Brown, because I couldn't really see it there, but with all the holes cut in it. Remember? Yeah. And got a rock all the time. I know Oscar that sent these in, in for his neighbor said that 
it may be a little bit harder to see to he had to squeeze things back to fit the caption at the bottom on our on our graphics there so it's a little bit harder to see now but you get the gist of it and welcome great pumpkin welcome great pumpkin yeah <laughs> thank you guys so thank much you, thank you thank you for that all right there is the moon just going behind the banner it's the uh well one day past full moon a couple of clouds out there this morning and we're going to be seeing just a few clouds mostly uh, clear skies this morning and temperatures will drop down to 65 degrees and then we'll warm up through the 70s this morning a couple of clouds out there a few more by the afternoon hours we make it up into the low to mid 80s and we top off 87 degrees there's the 20 percent chance for one or two of those showers out to the west so here's satellite picture there's this disturbance out here to the uh, the west of us and this is what is throwing just this little bit of energy in our western counties and that's what uh, computer models are picking up just one or two of them out there this is one of those long-range models that kind of broad brushes things but and there could actually be a, a sprinkle here in town just don't be surprised if you run into one of them. And then uh, next couple of days, not much going on. Some morning clouds and then sunshine in the afternoon. We're going to be warming up quite a bit. Then we have the front moving through at later on Wednesday into early Thursday morning. And this model does have a couple of showers associated with it again. Broad brush, not raining everywhere, but just a few of those showers early on Thursday. Then we're going to be clearing out. The weekend uh, will be close to normal readings, maybe a few degrees above that, a few more clouds as well. Then we get into Sunday, and that's when the next rain chance is going to be coming on in here. I think this one brings it in maybe a little bit early, still a week away, obviously, a little bit early on Sunday, but Sunday night into Monday. And again, this does paint things in with a broad brush, but as of right now, it's looking like an okay chance for some rain coming in here to start off next week. So for today, one or two of those showers out there later on this afternoon, primarily out to the west, mostly sunny skies at noon, 83 degrees, 87 high temperature, a couple of degrees above normal. Yeah, notice the humidity, a sprinkle or two, one of those showers out west. Tomorrow on the warm side, both ends of the scale, and then very warm on downright hot Wednesday, 92. The front comes through, a couple of showers, early Thursday, then we're going to clear out gorgeous afternoon Thursday. Temperatures will drop off quickly once the sun goes down Thursday night down to 58 Friday morning and then coolish mornings over the weekend. More clouds mid 80s and that chance of rain late Sunday into Monday. Wait, wait you said coolish mornings? Is that what yeah, you 62. said? 62. That's coolish. Yeah, but you, but you didn't use chili this half hour, did you? I said chili Friday morning. OK, OK, thank you. I apologize. Chili Friday. Coolish. Thank, thank you for all You're the welcome. above. 651, 64 degrees. Working on all of my. All right. The recent inflation rates have many people thinking about their money. So tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you about some things you can do to protect your retirement accounts. Back outside with live cam as we go to our last break. Yeah, it's beautiful uh, moonlight out there overnight. Very fallish, except for the weather for now. You're watching GMSA. All right, time check 655. Let's get one last look at that morning commute uh, 16 to 4 at John Peace. Not too bad, but still have this stalled vehicle out there 35 to 37. So watch out for those flashing lights. But the big issue will be right here along Loop 1604 eastbound at Bulverde Road, where we have a buildup of traffic out there due to a crash. Unfortunately, no trans guide cameras out there in the area. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. But just make sure you drive safe if your travels take you through 1604 East, Mike. Thank you, sir. Beautiful sunrise on tap. The uh, early morning glow sun's going to be coming up in about 40 minutes. 64 degrees now here in town and maybe a couple of showers out to the west today. 87 for a high temperature. Got a front coming through. It's going to be hot Wednesday, but at least we get some drier air coming in here for the end of the week. Oh, love that sunrise no, this morning. Beautiful way, way to end our show with that beautiful sunrise. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here at GMSA at 9. Good Morning America is next.